Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Back with uh, Ken Fury on the Corn School. And Ken, I want to talk about cover crops. Uh, a lot of conversations about uh, cover crops in corn. Um, what's your approach when it comes to planting cover crops in corn? Challenges, um, you, know, you know, especially when it comes, you talk about cereal rye. What are the challenges and can we mitigate them? The, the challenges definitely go with what cover crop you choose and what your planting rotation is. So here in Canada, because you have a lot of wheat, you have a lot more opportunity to put things ahead of corn from a cover crop perspective that may be restricted in a corn soybean rotation. Now, cereal rye is probably one of our biggest used cover crops because uh, we can plant it up through Thanksgiving. So we, we've got time to put that in. Uh, but the challenge with cereal rye, it's a grass crop and um, there's some antagonism between that grass crop and the corn crop. So just like corn on corn, we have to deal with allopathic issues. With cereal rye, there's an allopathic toxin you have to deal with. So it's some researchers call it the cemetery syndrome. Corn doesn't like growing where, where corn grows and it doesn't like growing where wheat or, or rye would grow in that sense. So you have to be aware of that. The other thing is, is how big that rye gets ahead of corn. And it's gonna create what we call the carbon or nitrogen penalty that you have to decompose that rye. So corn ahead of, or cereal rye ahead of corn is quite a bit bigger challenge than cereal rye ahead of soybeans. But there again, if you have wheat in the rotation, you could go to an annual rye or you could go to radishes, you go to oats, you got a lot more options there um, ahead of the corn that would be maybe easier or more palatable to work with than just the cereal rye. I was gonna ask you about, uh, is, is there the, a most suitable um, cover crop for corn um, or is it basically as you say this just just your situation in your system situation system and timing is where we're gonna be a, a, you know probably the one that we have the best luck with is a combination of oats and radish if we can get it in there and get it established uh, behind the bean crop um, in a situation where uh, we can actually get some pretty good growth in the winter. It'll kill out uh, during the winter, so we don't have to worry about that in the spring. And the radish cycles very fast, and its carbon load is not enough to worry about in corn. So uh, we call it uh, cover crop on training wheels, but uh, it's still an issue, like this year, if we couldn't get it established uh, till the first part of November, uh, we were already under snow um, by mid-November, so the growth out of it uh, really uh, wasn't very productive. You talked finally about, um, I guess, the situation in Ontario. We've got cold springs, you know, we don't have that heat. Um, what, um, you know, should we be killing cover crops in the fall versus the spring here in Ontario? Any thoughts on that? I think you could. Um, for instance, if you use cereal rye um, in behind a wheat crop and you went in and killed it and strip tilled into it, um, if, if you got enough growth. Now, if you problem with the killing a cover crop in the fall is usually we don't have enough growth to do any good with the cover crop and then you're wasting money on that cover crop itself so it would be definitely a field by field crop rotation by rotation basis we're chopping silage we need to really cover that ground uh, so we don't sit there all fall with nothing there and that's an excellent place to put it in then you may graze it instead of kill it uh, and actually use it as a forage crop as well great stuff Ken always great to have you on corn school you bet